All right, here we go. Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Um, I'm going to give it a few minutes for people to arrive. Um, but as you're joining us, feel free to put in the chat box where you're joining us from this evening. Uh, we love getting to see how far our classes reach across the country, across the globe. Um, you can also put in the chat box if you feel comfortable, if this is your first class with us at Oracacia, if you've taken a class before. Um, we love to see who's new, who's joining us again. So again, welcome everyone. We'll get started in a few minutes. Um, we'll give it a maybe two or three minutes for people to arrive. Um, but like I said, feel free to type into the chat box, let us know where you're joining from, if you've taken a class with us before, uh, and then we'll get started. Welcome everybody. Those of you just joining us, if you want to type in the chat box uh, where you're joining us from. Oh, we've got someone from Wheat Ridge, Colorado. Oh, and you took last month's class. Wonderful. That was a fun class. Uh, I gave a lot of those products that we made at that class away as gifts, and they were uh, they were very well received this year. Um, from Florida, wonderful. I bet you've got much nicer weather than we do in Florida. I just found out schools are closed again tomorrow in my area. Um, we're getting one whole inch of snow tonight, everyone. One whole inch, so schools are closed. Um, we've got someone from Michigan, awesome. Highlands Ranch, Colorado, first class, welcome. So happy you're joining us for your first class with Oracacia. Um, those of you just joining us, we'll be getting started in a couple of minutes, but I always like to hear where you're joining us from, if you've taken classes before. Littleton, Colorado. Oh, so many wonderful people from Colorado, Massachusetts. Oh, I'm so glad you've taken so many classes with us. Thank you. All right. I adore Colorado. Um, we've got a lot of people joining us from Colorado this evening. I was, my, my husband and I were this close to moving to Colorado um, about seven or eight years ago. And then we ended up staying here in Northern Virginia, but there are there are times that I, I very much regret not moving to Colorado because I just, um, I love Colorado. I was just out in um, Granby, Colorado for the American Herbalist Guild Conference back in October, and it was stunning. And it makes me laugh that, you know, schools here are closed for the inch of snow we're supposed to get tonight. And I was like driving through the mountains in Granby, Colorado, like, you know, going two miles per hour through like four inches of snow and people were just like zipping by like it was nothing. So as East Coasters, we are we are softies when it comes to the weather. Well, mid-Atlantic, northern East Coast, you guys know how to handle it. Northern East Coast is getting pummeled this week too. Okay. All right, so um, it's a little bit after 8.30 my time, 7.30 Central, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome, everyone. My name is Betsy Miller. I'm one of the uh, aromatherapy educators here at Oracacia. I'm also a uh, registered herbalist with the American Herbalist Guild. So I have um, a lot of hats in the plant world. I do a lot of things involving plants. I make my own products. Uh, I teach about herbal medicine and essential oils. I do a lot of work on the frontier side of, of our wonderful co-op family, teaching about the bulk herbs and spices. Um, so really any opportunity I have to sit with people and talk about plants brings me, brings me so much joy. Um, so tonight we'll be talking about some of Oricacia's new air care products and, uh, how I've started to use them and why getting into this idea of, um, beautiful, clean air in our homes is so important. Um, but before I talk about the products tonight, I always like to do a little bit of an introduction to Oricacia. Um, or Acacia, for those of you who don't know much about us, we are part of Frontier Co-op. I like to say that um, Frontier is like our mothership. And under Frontier, we have uh, Or Acacia, our wonderful essential oils and air care products and uh, carrier oils. We also have Simply Organic, and they do the amazing like vanilla extract and my favorite um, taco, taco seasoning, and then um, Plant Boss. And Plant Boss is um, a company that's part of our co-op and they do like meat alternatives. So like um, Sloppy Joe's that are plant-based. So that's our wonderful co-op family. And uh, it's, we're one of the, if not the only remaining bulk herb co-op in the entire country. So that, that's pretty special for who we are and the values that we hold as, as a co-op. Um, I also want to preface this class tonight by saying that uh, I have bronchitis, which is so much fun. <laughs> I've been dealing with... Um, respiratory infection after respiratory infection 
this winter with all the the wonderful cooties that um that my my littles bring home from daycare and they've they've really been been challenging me uh, this winter more so than in the past so it's definitely getting me to reevaluate you know my my lifestyle inputs as I like to talk about and why I've been so much more susceptible this winter to respiratory infections and looking at my sleep which you know has not been as the mother of two small children a five-year-old and a two-year-old who's going through the most fun sleep regression um my sleep isn't great and my stress management hasn't been uh where I like it to be so all these factors are contributing to my susceptibility to cooties uh this winter so I apologize if I have to stop and cough or use a cough drop and um drink some water but I am I am I don't like saying powering through because I think that's a really bad mentality around illness I think um really as a, a culture we've lost the we've lost the value or the understanding of convalescence and when it's important to rest. Um, but that being said, I love talking about plants. So I think of this, this type of class as a U stress, meaning a good stress that's actually building um, my wellness because it brings me joy instead of draining my wellness because it's, you know, work. It doesn't feel that way to me because I love plants. Uh, okay. I also want to introduce my my wonderful coworker. I point to my computer, but my wonderful coworker Nicole is on with me tonight. She'll be um, able to answer some of your questions in the chat box. I'll do my best to monitor the chat box as I uh, go throughout the class. Um, Nicole is our wonderful uh, social media expert. She she runs the Oracacia um, Facebook and Instagram. So she's the the brilliance behind our, our wonderful social media posts. Uh, my my counterpart, Elena, who usually does these classes with me, she gave birth uh, in December to a beautiful, sweet little baby girl named Aurora, uh, full name Aurora, nicknamed Rory. Um, so we are just so, so thrilled to have another little aromatherapy baby on the Oracacia team. And Elena will be on maternity leave. Um until March and she'll be back with us uh, teaching her first Oracacia virtual class since maternity leave in May to do our Mother's Day class. Um, so Nicole is is stepping in for Elena. So she'll be able to answer more of your technical questions. I'll be able to answer more of the aromatherapy questions. Okay, so now to the fun stuff. So the the idea for this, this uh, air freshening line or, or as we call it in-house, our air care line really blossomed out of um, the last, the time warp of the last four years since um, since COVID happened and so many of us were finding ourselves at home more often and um, concerned about the, just the vibe in our home while we're trying to balance work and, and home life and social life in this new weird world of, of not going out in public as much and being home. Um, so uh, th there was a boom in the use of air freshening products like room sprays and wall plugins and things to make the home feel more more homey and beautiful because we were here so much more um for me things didn't change all that much cuz i i'm a remote employee i should say you know oracacia is based in iowa uh and i'm here in northern virginia with our exciting 1 inch of snow that we're getting tonight can't even wait um so, you know, for me, I've always had this, um, this love of creating my space uh, with aroma. And I do it with not just the essential oils, but with, with plants that I, you know, I'll hang. I have my, I normally don't like to show the rest of my house because it's absolute chaos with my two children. But this is my, my happy place in my house. You can see my, my plant window over there. I have my, my house plant addiction contained to that one section of my home. Um, where my children can't reach it as well. So um, this idea that we can we can beautify our spaces and create different types of feelings in our spaces with aroma um, has really blossomed out of the last four years where we found ourselves in the home so much more. Um, and our take on it is that people are so um, dedicated to wellness around the ingredients that we're using in our food. Sorry, I'm getting used to my AirPods. I was just telling Nicole, I, I don't like them. I think I have very small ears and the AirPod keeps feeling like it's going to fall out. Um, 
so we're very we're very dedicated most of us to um the quality of the ingredients that we're putting in our bodies with our food and our water and on our bodies with our skincare products especially those of us who love making their own um body oils with the carrier oils and the essential oils um and and yet there hasn't been a good variety of home air freshening products um, that match that criteria for cleanliness around ingredient choice. Um, so that's one of the things that I really love about this new product line from Oracacia is that um, we're, we're meeting that need for aroma and, and creating really sacred space in the home um, without bringing those, those chemicals into it. So uh, I saw this great bumper sticker and I really need to track down where I can find it. And it says, um, uh, fragrance is the new smoking. And I love that. So when you're reading product ingredients like air fresheners or room sprays, and if you see the word fragrance on there, that's usually a catch all phrase that can imply pure natural essential oils, but also leaves space for synthetics and chemical additives and lab created limonene that is not actually from a plant and things like that that are very easy to replicate in a lab and can extend aroma or um, make it, you know, cheaper to use a little bit of lavender, but add fake lavender smell into it. So the product doesn't cost as much for the manufacturer to make. Um, so I always, when I'm exploring new products, keep my eye out for that word fragrance, because that implies it likely has additional ingredients in it that were not produced by a plant. And the beautiful thing about plants and people is that we have co-evolved for millennia, right? Since humans have existed in all our many numerous forms, we have used plants. We've used them for recreation. We have used them for medicine. We have used them for their beauty. And our bodies know what to do with the chemical messaging from plants. Um, the world that we live in now, this uh, this soup, if you will, of, of lab-created chemicals, um, some of them are wonderful, right? We need the lab created chemicals that have designed certain pharmaceuticals that are life saving. But the pharmaceutical, the the lab created chemicals that we put in our cleaning products that are known endocrine disruptors. That means they can actually interfere with hormone balance. Um, they have estrogenic effects. So women were especially susceptible to some of these chemicals. Um, that piece of human history is very new, and we don't fully understand yet the long-term ramifications of constantly exposing our physiology to these chemicals and chemical inputs that our body doesn't know what to do with in the same way that it knows how to work with plants. We have this amazing, um, I like to think of it as like a biochemical dance between our physiology and the messaging from the plants. So every time we inhale an aroma, so right now in my diffuser, I have my favorite one of the new blends, which is Citrus Burst. I'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, as I'm inhaling that Citrus Burst, it's not just a fragrance that I smell and then it goes away, right? It's not just an aroma that I smell and go away. I'm actually taking those essential oil molecules into my body via the nose. They're getting into my bloodstream through inhalation. So when we are smelling things, we are actually taking those substances, whether or not it's a plant substance, like a volatile oil or a chemical substance, like an additive in a product into our body. Uh, and our, our bodies don't really know how to respond yet or effectively or safely necessarily to the chemicals added to a lot of our cleaning products and our home care products. Um, I'm a particular case that I have to be very careful because I have something called MCS, which is multiple chemical sensitivity. So I actually get migraines <laughs> if I'm around like I can't go down the cleaning aisle at a grocery store. I've had to leave hotels because they have those um, plugins like high up in the wall where you can't reach them that every like 15 to 20 minutes, just pff, it lets out a puff of scented air. And I was very, very ill. Um, so I, you know, have for my adult life have always used this type of product um, because I very much believe in using the power of nature as opposed to the power of chemicals. So that brings me to what these awesome new products are. And then um, I'm going to start with the mists and the toilet sprays. And I'll talk about the diffusion blends last <clears throat> because I've actually um, been playing around with different ways to use them outside of diffusion. So I can share some of my recipes with you all that I've been working with um, that aren't necessarily on the website yet um, because they're just things that I've, I've been playing with um, and I haven't pitched them to innovation yet. So. 
Um, we have these wonderful new aromatherapy mists, uh, our room sprays. And um, they're different from what we've come out with before because they more closely resemble some of the um, the popular products that people want to create certain environments in their home, like the feeling of being at the ocean or in a tropical paradise. So um, instead of having a product name like Uplifting that tells more about, you know, what, what the aromatherapy effect might have. Um, these ones, we've created descriptors around them that really teach you about the aroma and what you might experience or where it might transport you to uh, when using these products. So it's funny. If you look at the four bottles that I have, one of them, if you can see it, is clearly almost empty. And that's the Paradise one. Um, and this is actually my son's favorite. It has citrus, jasmine, and rose. And I think he likes it so much because ever since this, my, my five-year-old is obsessed with it. Ever since he was a baby, I've always used a combination of citrus, jasmine, and rose in my own personal perfume blend. So I think it reminds him of me because uh, scent association is one of the strongest um, memory tools that we have at our disposal, creating memory and bond through aroma. It's one of the reasons why when a baby is first born, it's so important to get the baby right to your body so that they can start cultivating that connection to you via their sense of smell. Um, so I think that's why he loves it so much. But this one, it's like, it reminds me of um, being in, uh, in Costa Rica for some reason. I don't know why I spent some time in Costa Rica and just being in that like tropical region and having all the beautiful blooming flowers all around me. Um, I have to like teach my son. I, we've given him a limit of how much he can use this. He can only do one spray per couch cushion and one spray per section of the carpet um, because he'll go through like half a bottle in, you know, one sitting if we don't like actively give him boundaries around how much to use it because he loves it so much. Um, so that's his favorite. My personal favorite is the fresh floral because I, you know, again, mentioning, you know, how I've been so much more susceptible to, um, to respiratory infections this winter. Um, I'm, one of the things I'm doing is working on, on my personal stress management and lavender we know has that deep calming and relaxing effect. Um, so I've been using the fresh floral. It's a blend of the three different lavenders that we carry. True lavender, which is Lavendula angustifolia. That's the lavender that we do associate with that calm relaxation, use it before bedtime. Um, but it also has our lavendin and spike lavender, which are two different species of lavender. And those ones are a little bit higher in camphor, which means they're a little bit more stimulating and awakening. So what I love about this blend is that it's, it's calming without making me feel like I need to take a nap. If I do just straight lavendula angustifolia, straight, you know, true lavender, I have that scent association of like, okay, it's time to go to bed. But with the slight stimulation from camphor in the fresh floral, I can spray it when I feel, I, I usually wear a, a Garmin activity tracker. It's charging right now. And it will alert me when I'm going through times of stress. So like I was teaching a class this morning and when I teach my heart rate, I get excited. My heart rate gets elevated. I get happy but it senses that heart rate elevation and it thinks I'm going through a time of stress. So it'll say like, practice your deep breathing, calm down. So when it's been alerting me to times of stress, um, just, you know, while I'm, I'm working or just being a mom, whatever, I will actually like use this as part of my, my deep breathing and self-care. I'll spray it uh, usually on the chair where I'm about to sit and then I'll sit and, and, plant my feet. And one of my favorite visual visualizations is that um, I imagine I have roots growing. You know, I'm an herbalist, everything. I love roots, roots growing from the bottom of my feet, anchoring me to the earth, anchoring me to the ground. And I breathe fortifying energy up through those roots. And then I exhale anything I don't need back down and out through my roots. Um, and I do that for about five minutes. And I try to do that twice a day. Uh, and it's been very, very helpful in my, my self-care and my mindfulness practice. Um, and I really loved incorporating um, the room spray into it. Um, and with these, you can, you know, there's so many different ways that you can use them based on the aroma, based on personal preference. Um, you can spray it on your linens and bed pillows before bed. I like to do just straight lavender for that because I'm, you know, I, I'm more sensitive to, I understand that camphor effect and it, it does 
it relaxes me, but not to, as strongly as I need before bedtime. Cause I am very, if you um, follow Ayurvedic medicine at all, I'm very pitta, you know, very high energy. And sometimes it can take me a while to wind down before bed. So I just knock it with all the lavender. We also have our ocean air, which is um, citrus, lavender, blue tansy, essential oil. And this really is like, like being at the ocean. It's that, you know, that feeling of when you get to the ocean and you're, you're walking to the beach and you can't see the beach yet, but you smell the water, you smell the ocean, you smell the salt air. They did such a good job when formulating this recipe of capturing that moment where you first smell the ocean air. Um, so this one, um, I'm surprised my, my five-year-old hasn't become as obsessed with this one as he is with the paradise because um, all these aromas I use with him as well and he loves them. So ocean air is a really fun one, especially if you like creating that more um, like uplifted beach vibe in your home. The ocean air is an excellent choice. And then we have fresh, which is citrus, pine, and tea tree. And this is really the aroma for creating more of that like crisp, just clean, like I cleaned my house, but I really didn't type of aroma. That's one of my favorite ways to use room sprays or diffusion blends. If I'm going to have people over, um, like my mother-in-law or my mother, and I haven't cleaned the house, I've just shoved toys into closets and maybe wiped it on the surface that was especially sticky. Um, but if I diffuse a lot of essential oils or I spray these room sprays, it actually makes my house seem so much more clean than it really is, especially if you don't look too close. Um, so that's one of my favorite ways to use the room sprays uh, is to create that, that illusion that I live in a clean home instead of a home with, with two toddler boys and a husband. Um, which brings me to the next set of products. Um, oh, Nicole says... It's not letting me send messages to everyone. Okay, so give me just a second to coach her through that. So you just need to change the settings, Nicole, where you can say the message to. You can set it to um, send it to everyone instead of hosts and panelists. So I don't have that option. Okay, give it a oh, try now. Now, now it left. I reset it, just it for switched. you. Yes. There we go. Thank so you. Nicole's going to put links to the, the different products in the chat box for you. Um, okay. So, uh, the toilet sprays, if you've ever heard of the, um, the brand Poopery, right? They, they have their line of toilet sprays. Um, so these are, are the wonderful Oracacia new toilet sprays that, um, I will say I never understood the value of a toilet spray before having toddlers that I am actively potty training. I mean, my five-year-old is potty trained. Like, you know, he's good about that. He potty trained in like a day. It was awesome. But his aim when using the bathroom, not so much. My two-year-old, not so much into potty training. So um, the bathrooms in my house can often be especially difficult to maintain and, uh, and keep clean. And the toilet sprays really help me feel less like... I often think that the state of my home is a reflection of myself and like my own state of self-care. And when my home is in disarray, I often have that internal dialogue or, or internal judgment that it means I'm in a state of disarray. And I'm as a mother, I've had to really work hard to let that go. And part of that has been reclaiming some of that feeling of, of being put together by using aromatherapy in my air spaces to make my home feel more clean than it is. Um, and bathrooms are a great, great place for that. Um, so my personal favorite, I'm a citrus girl. I will always gravitate towards anything citrus is the, uh, citrus burst. And it's got our, all of our citruses, literally all of them, orange, lemon, lime, mandarin, um, uh, sweet orange, grapefruit, blood orange, like literally all of our amazing citruses went into this. And it's so easy to use. I'm teaching my five-year-old how to do it. And he thinks it's the best game ever. But you literally, you know, you spray it in the toilet and then go and then flush. And it releases those volatile oils into the air as the toilet flushes to hide aromas. So um, I, <laughs> my one of my close friends and I, um, I'm very fortunate that two of my best friends had uh, had babies around the same time I did five years ago with my oldest. 
and we're going through motherhood for the first time together. And um, one of the things that we that we text each other most often about is, you know, why do our husbands always find the most inopportune time to spend like 30 minutes in the bathroom when the house is crazy and the kids are going insane? Um, so as a joke, I sent them each, you know, one of the, uh, the citrus uh, burst toilet sprays and they actually love it. <laughs> they, they said it's made them, you know, it, the bathroom's a much more tolerable space after we can't find our husbands for 45 minutes. Not to throw men under the bus. I apologize for that. It's just an, an ongoing running joke with, with my friends and I. I do see a question that came in about, um, is the spray just for the air or also surfaces? Um, you can absolutely use it on surfaces, especially the, the fresh that has the, uh, the tea tree and pine essential oil in it. Um, both of those are very purifying cleansing. So you can totally use this on surfaces. It's not, um, not designed as a surface spray in terms of like the concentration. So when I make my own cleaning products, I do a much higher dilution ratio, um, than I would for just a general air spray, but for just, you know, general maintenance cleaning, absolutely. You could use these, um, I mean, citrus or, or essential oils by nature are purifying. The, that's the way volatile oils are. Um, but you can absolutely use those on surfaces for general, just, you know, like if, if I saw something sticky on the table, cause my kid was just eating there, I could absolutely use that and then wipe it up. Um, for a deeper clean, I would make my either, you know, use a clean product that, you know, and that you love or make my own, I make my own surface cleaner with, um, distilled water, white vinegar, and the, um, medieval mix from Oracacia. And you can find that recipe on the website, the Oracacia website. Um, Nicole, if you can find it, you can even link to it. Um, and for the most part, I do recommend if you're cleaning a surface, especially with cats, wipe it dry or wait for it to dry before letting an animal on the surface. Cats in particular can't metabolize essential oils uh, and they can be toxic to cats. So we actually do that, get that question a lot when it comes to the diffusion blends in general, in particular, but the mists as well you know, can these products be used around pets? And um, my rule of thumb is with cats, I try to avoid essential oil use in the same room as a cat. So if a cat, you know, if their room is, is you know, if they're a, a basement cat and that's where they like to live, that's where their litter box is, I probably won't diffuse in the basement because that's their space. Um, if it's an apartment, I'll always make sure the cat can leave the room or just any animal in general, your dog, um, I never diffuse in a closed space with an animal where they cannot leave. So they always have to have the right to leave the room if they don't feel comfortable around the aroma. Essential oils and sprays should never be used directly on the animals. That's for sure, especially cats, um, but dogs either. Um, I don't recommend using any of these products directly on an animal, regardless of how awful the dog might smell after it comes in from rolling in the mud. Um <clears throat> So uh, I hope that answers your question about pets. Cats, definitely a no-go. Dogs, you can totally use them in the same room as a dog. Um, but again, just make sure that they have space to leave. Um, so now on to my absolute favorite part of the new products are our diffusion blends. So these are going to be the same aroma profiles that you saw in the toilet sprays and the... Um, the mists with the exception of paradise. And then we have the addition of spring rain, which is so nice. It's just that like, oh, just uplifting, um, that feeling of, you know, when you're cozy and, and dry inside, but the beautiful rain is coming down outside. Um, I really love this one. It's very dominant in tangerine. So again, anything citrus and lavender and lime. It's very, very nice. Uh, so we've got spring rain, uh, ocean air, which I talked about, my personal favorite, citrus burst, which I use for everything. Linen, um, this one, I actually brought something to show you. One of the ways I've been using linen is I have these really cool wool dryer balls that my kid has been playing with. So now it's covered in dog hair, but that's okay. Um, I'll put the linen blend, um, which is a really nice blend of lavender, tangerine, um, lime, eucalyptus, so very much that like crisp, that crisp, fresh, just laundered aroma. So I'll put um, like a lot, like 20 to 30 drops of this on a dryer ball. And then I toss this into the dryer 
with our clothes when they're when they're in the dryer and it really helps impart that aroma into the clothes in the dryer. If you don't have um, a dryer ball like that, you can get the unscented dryer sheets and add your own aromas to them. It can be linen, it can be fresh floral. So that's another one of the ways I've been using these is on dryer sheets if I can't find my dryer ball because my kids have been playing with them. Um, and let's see, oil on a dryer ball doesn't stain or get onto clothes. I have never had a problem with that happening. Um, they do, a, the oil does a really good job of staying on the dryer ball itself. So I've never had an issue with it staining clothes. Um, I don't have a lot of fancy fabrics. Like I don't have cashmere things, which I don't think you put cashmere in the dryer anyway, right? I don't, I don't have fancy clothes because I've got kids. My husband's back there shaking his head like, no, cashmere does not go in the dryer. So kudos to him for knowing that instead of me. Um, silk, I don't have silk. So I can't speak to the fancier fabrics, but in terms of just my regular, you know, cotton clothes, I have never had an issue with oils on a dryer ball getting onto, um, onto clothes. And then there's a question of how many drops of, of essential oil on the dryer ball, depending on the size for one like this, I do like 20 to 30 drops. It's a lot because the heat causes the, um, the essential oils to degrade much faster. So I go a little heavier on essential oils on dryer balls. On dryer sheets, I would probably do like 10 per sheet. Uh, and you could throw, you know, one or two of those in the dryer. So dryer balls are such a fun way to start using these air cares uh, diffusion blends. They really are intended for diffusion. So creating that ambiance around your home. Um, you can do it in different rooms, like fresh floral or linen in the bedroom. Um, for that peaceful feeling or citrus burst in the kitchen. People in the, uh, tend to like that, you know, uplifting citrus in the kitchen to make it feel sparkly and clean. Um, and then there's a question about cleaning recipe links to congestion products for kids. We have a wonderful kids line. Um, so Nicole can link you to the kids line products. Um, we have a fantastic line of, of products that um, later in 2024, like as we get back to school in fall of 2024, I'll definitely be doing a, a class on back to school aromatherapy for kids. And I'll talk about some of the products from our kids line. But we have a great uh, line of kids products, including uh, clearing essential oil, which is wonderful. Clearing essential oil blend. So some of the other ways that I've been using these new oil blends outside of um, just diffusion, I mentioned the dryer balls. If you don't have dryer balls, you can add a couple of drops to um, just the washing machine itself or even into the, if you do like an unscented um, laundry soap. So I like to use the seventh generation unscented laundry soap and add my own aroma to it. Um, so again, citrus, I've been adding citrus first to it. I think it's amazing. Um, I've also been making, I make my own carpet powders. I have two dogs. Um, I have a Beagle Border Collie who's just ridiculous. And then I have a um, Jack Russell Terrier who's getting up there in age. He's 15. And um, <laughs> we've been starting to have issues with him um, uh, and incontinence around the house. So I've been dealing with that aroma on top of wet dog with all this snow on top of, you know, kids. It's a lot of, a lot of aromas to deal with in the house. Um, but carpet powders, what I do is I'll do about a quarter cup to a half cup of baking soda depending on the the surface area that I'm trying to, to vacuum and clean. Um, and about 20 to 30 drops per quarter cup of, of baking soda. So 20 to 30 drops of whichever essential oil blend you like most. Mix it together. And then I uh, sprinkle it on the carpet. And I wait 15 to 20 minutes. And then I vacuum it up. Um, again, I wouldn't do that with a carpet that your cat loves to just like roll around on, or I would at least keep the cat out of that carpet for maybe an hour or two to give the volatile oils time to dissipate. Um, with my dogs, I just keep them off of the carpet when it's, um, when the, the powder is down with the essential oils so that they can't roll in it. Uh, but it really, really helps. The baking soda helps deodorize the carpet. And then the essential oils really get absorbed into the, the fibers of the carpet. Uh, and then you vacuum up the, the baking soda and it leaves the aroma of the essential oil in the, the, fab, the fibers of the carpet, which is really nice for dealing with the abundance of aroma in a home with kids and pets. I will say the quality of your vacuum is important if you're doing ca carpet powders. If you have an older vacuum or one that isn't as, uh, just isn't as good, isn't as strong, you can end up with a lot of baking uh, baking soda 
left on your carpet, um, which most people probably don't want. So just make sure you have a good um, vacuum for that. I have one that's like specifically for like pet hair that works really, really well. I've never tried that carpet, uh, carpet powder trick with like a Roomba or any of the like robot vacuums. So I can't speak to the effectiveness there. I don't know if anyone else has, and you can, um, you can share that if you've done that, that would be awesome if anyone has that experience. So carpet powders are another great way to use these making my own surface cleaners. Um, again, I gravitate towards citrus burst for that because citrus oils, there's a reason so many cleaning products feature lemon essential oil. It's very good at cleaning, at purifying counter spaces, bathrooms. So I'll do my, um, I'll do a, a cup of distilled water, a cup of white vinegar, and a full teaspoon of the essential oil blend. And you can either do citrus burst, or I mentioned before I'll do, um, before we had this line, I would do medieval mix, which is the Oracacia take on thieves essential oil. Um, we can't say thieves because another, or we can't call our product thieves because another company copyrighted that, even though it's been around since like, you know, the plague. Um, but citrus burst makes a really nice counter spray, especially for the kitchens that just leaves it smelling like super, super sparkly. Um, I also have been adding drops of these to my gym shoes. And I really like either ocean air or spring rain for that. Um, gym shoes can get pretty gnarly. And even, I mean, even my kids' shoes, my, my five-year-old goes to a farm school um, so he's, you know, today he was literally in, you know, in his uh, snow bib and winter jacket all day, you know, feeding the animals and, um, you know, scooping the poop and taking care of the animals and, you know, learning about how they're going to plant the gardens in the spring and going sledding. So he was outside all day. So I'll put several drops of, you know, citrus burst on his winter jacket or spring rain in his shoes to kind of combat odors there. So there's, I just had so much fun coming up with new ways to use these recipe or these um, essential oil blends outside of just diffusion um, because they're so versatile, even though their intention was diffusion. Um, the sprays and the toilet sprays are, are really more, you know, you use them for what they're designed for, spraying in the air. The essential oil blends make wonderful diffusion options. And I'm really excited for some of these other ways um, that I've been incorporating them into like creating my, my space. Um, so I'll open it up for a couple of minutes to see if you all ha if you all have any questions about, um, these new products. And then I want to share some of the really awesome, um, classes that we have coming up in the next couple of months for you for our Oracacia virtual class series. Oh, and then, um, Nicole, uh. <laughs> while I'm waiting for people to, um, post questions if you have any. Um, if you could put a link in uh, the chat box to our YouTube channel. If you liked our class tonight, if it was your first one, or you really want to learn more about aromatherapy, we have an amazing YouTube channel where you can watch recordings of all of our past uh, virtual classes. And um, one of the things I really want to highlight on that YouTube channel is Elena and I, um, in the fall, we did a three-part aromatherapy series where we uh, did deep dives into top notes, middle notes, and base notes in aromatherapy, what some of the expected effects associated with the different notes are, um, how we blend with the different aromatherapy notes to create our own aroma blends, um, a little bit of the phytochemistry, if you really geek out about phytochemistry like we do. Um, so I really recommend taking that three-part class. It's all free on our YouTube channel as a great introduction to aromatherapy. Um, and then some really fun like Halloween classes that are my personal favorite because they get to dress up. Um, so all of that's available on our, our YouTube channel. So I saw a couple of questions come in. Let me just scroll back up in the chat box. So do you know what ingredient helps air sprays, um, homemade air sprays linger in the air? It seems they all, oh, why am I having a hard time accessing the rest of that message? Hold on. It seems they, they all dissipate almost immediately. Okay, yeah, so that is an issue with most homemade air products like diffusion blends, um, room sprays that you make yourself. The reason that, <coughs> excuse me, so many commercial products are so popular is that they, they seem to linger in the airspace for much longer than something you make at home. And there's a reason for that. It's all the chemical additives. 
uh, the synthetic chemicals that really bind those volatile oils and hold them in the airspace. The reason essential oils, when they're held within the plant, the reason they're called volatile oils is that chemically they, they dissipate. Just like you said, they dissipate so easily once they hit the airspace that part of the, the challenge is figuring out how to get them to hold a little bit longer so that you can smell it. Um, so something, you know, something like the, the commercial wall plugins or commercial room sprays, um, they've, they've tried to circumnavigate that by adding a lot of chemical fixatives into the blends. Um, we only include plant-based ingredients in our blends. Um, so we have uh, polysorbate 20 and lactobacillus ferment that act both as fixatives and um, uh, preservatives, but they are, they're non-toxic plant-based plant source preservatives and fixatives. Um, we can't expect something that is fully plant-based and natural to have as long of a you know, a half-life as a chemical-based product, unfortunately. Um, it just means we maybe diffuse them more frequently or spray them more frequently. So, you know, my, and I make that sacrifice for myself, you know, creating an airspace feel is that I, as much as I want a product that the aroma is just going to linger forever, I know that it does that because it has things in it I don't want to be breathing in. So I choose something like these products that, you know, they might not have quite as long as of the, the hang time in the air as some of the commercial products. But I know that when I am breathing them in, I'm not afraid of, of what I'm breathing in. So that gives me peace of mind. When they're making them, when you're making them yourself, like if you wanted to make your own room sprays using any of the um, essential oil blends, you could try adding in a little bit of um, like 190 proof alcohol. So do like 10% 190 proof alcohol, or, you know, if you can find 150 something as high proof as you can find because alcohol binds volatile oils. You can do like 10% uh, alcohol, 90% distilled water, and then your essential oils that will help, you know, as a fixative to hold it in the air a little bit longer, but not so much as, as unfortunately, you know, a, a synthetic. So let's see some new messages we had pop in. Oh, you're very, very welcome. I'm glad you enjoyed the information. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you feel motivated after these classes. Again, I just, I love teaching about plants. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, I'm glad, I'm glad that you love everything. Thank you. Okay. So feel free to type any more questions that you have into the chat box, but I'll just really quickly share with you a couple of the fun upcoming classes we have. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Um, also, um, as a thank you for joining us tonight, we do have a coupon code that we can share with you. Um, Nicole will type it in the chat box, but it's AC2590, AC2590. And you can use that um, on the Oracacia website to get a discount on any of these products if you're interested in getting to know them, starting to play with them. Um, and then, oh, we had a question about the bulk herbs. You can go to uh, Frontier Co-op dot com and you'll see more information about the frontier of the bulk herbs and spices um a lot of the bulk herbs and spices uh you can source at like your local co-op so if you ever go to like a co-op or an herb store and you see um their herbs and spices like you know put into jars that you can scoop out yourself a lot of those come from frontier um so we supply our herbs to a lot of uh, uh co-ops around um but you can definitely find them on the frontier co-op website um, and oh, thank you so much, uh, Nicole, linked to the Frontier Co-op website. So just to give you an idea of what fun classes we have coming up, um, I will be teaching the next several while Elena is on maternity leave. So of course, for February, we have to do a, um, oh my God, I almost said Thanksgiving. Wow. Uh, Valentine's Day theme. So on Thursday, February 8th, same time, uh, 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern. We'll be making uh, a really fun and saucy uh, Valentine's Day massage oil, a sugar scrub, um, and a love potion diffusion. Um, so keep an eye out for that on our social media accounts. Nicole will be posting about the registration for that. All of these, again, are free because we want to connect with you all and share our love of essential oils. So that one will be with me. And then um, 
in March, we'll be doing, I'll be doing a deep dive into our carrier oils. So I actually taught that class this morning, an internal class for some of the, um, the Oracation Frontier folks getting to know our, our carrier oils a little bit better. So learning about what's the difference between avocado oil and hemp seed oil. When would you choose one over the other? What's the fatty acid composition? How do you know what's best for your skin type? How do you blend them? You know, what proportions? So we'll be doing a deep dive into our carrier oils and I'll be sharing a recipe and demonstrating how to make one of my favorite facial serums um, with jojoba and rosehip. Thursday, April 18th, um, we'll be welcoming Elena back and um, we will be doing a debunking essential oil myths class, which I'm really excited about. So is it safe to drink essential oils? Is lavender really a carrier oil? What's up with therapeutic grade? So uh, if you want the answers to those questions, again, that will be Thursday, April 18th. And then our wonderful um, Mother's Day class will be Thursday, May 16th. That will be with Elena again, welcoming her back from maternity leave. She'll get to teach her class on Mother's Day. And then in June, uh, I'll be doing a class on celebrating the summer solstice with essential oils. So that's the wonderful lineup that we have coming up for our free Oracacia virtual classes. So again, follow us on Instagram and uh, TikTok and Facebook. I'm, I'm slowly learning how to TikTok. Nicole is being very patient with me. So you might see me on TikTok here and there. Um, but follow us on social media to learn a little bit more about the essential oils and how we use them, recipes. Um, I do a Facebook Live twice a month for talking about our oil of the month and our carrier oil of the month. So we have a lot of wonderful um, educational opportunities uh, coming up to share with you all. So um, oh, the March class is, what did I say? March hmm? 21st, Thursday, March 21st, getting to know carrier oils. That will be with me. So I'll be doing February and March, and then we will welcome Elena back in April. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. I, I appreciate any opportunity to connect with people over plants. So um, again, I just, I'm so grateful that you all we're here that I could share a little bit about our awesome new aromatherapy blends. And uh, I really hope to see you in one of our upcoming classes. Feel free to check out our previous classes on our YouTube channel to learn more about aromatherapy and some really fun recipes. And we will see you all next time. Have a great night, everybody.